Hey everyone, this is Matt. How are you? Hey Sandy. How are you today? Hopefully people remember who I am and they visit us here today. <laughs> it's going to be a good class. Hey Phoenix, how are you? Good afternoon in the UK. Nice. Okay, let me just give everyone a couple... Let me lower my volume here. How are you today? Okay, good. Um, I'll give everyone a couple minutes. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Ileana. Ismael, how are you? Aurora, how are you? Good to see you guys here. What I'd like to do for you here today is to talk about uh, composing landscape sketches. Hey, Aura, um, landscape sketches in terms of composing landscapes, but more in a sketchy what the technical term would be is more of a thumbnail uh, sort of way, but a little bit bigger than a thumbnail, so you can actually see it. A thumbnail would be like a one by two inch sketch. Hi, I-L-S-E, that's a tough one, from Maine. Lease, I don't know if it's Lease. Peter, how are you, Peter? I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been a really, really busy week. I taught a pre-college class at the School of Visual Arts five days in a row on Zoom. And uh, it was a lot of time in front of the computer, a lot of time sitting in this chair. I need to spend some time, hi Marie, off of this chair, getting my butt off of this chair and getting out a little bit this weekend. Um, that would be a, a really good thing for me to do for my body. Uh, but before I do that, hey, so Savi, I, I want to talk to you about this landscape thing. So um, Ruka is here from India. Barbara, hello, Barbara. Thanks for joining us. Fresser, Sa Sala, Chuck, how are you, Chuck? Good to see you. V. Yeah, you got to work hard to pay the bills. <laughs> Got to do your thing here. You know, it, it. you just take a couple days off and, you know, the Internet will just swallow you whole. There's so many good artists on the Internet and uh, uh, you will be uh, thrown to the woodshed. But um, the pre-college class was really fun. I had a, a, a great group of students. I invited them to join me today. Um, and uh, if there are anybody from the pre-college class is watching, say hello. And uh, I, I thank you so much for joining me. So um, a lot of names coming in. And I really do appreciate y you, um, Paris, wow, uh, joining me. So you guys are here. It's a, it's a beautiful Saturday where I live here out on eastern Long Island. It's a beautiful sunny day. We're supposed to get to be like 85, 86 degrees. So I want to spend a little time outside today, even though it's going to be super hot. And uh, so let's get started. So uh, today's class, like I said, is about composing landscape sketches, specifically using a um, center line to help you compose, okay? So what I'm using today, and the materials are in the comments section, I, I, I might use a little bit of charcoal later on in this um, live stream. Uh, Craig is a coaching student, and he bought me these, let me show you, and they're really messy. He was nice enough, and he just surprised me and sent me these pan pastels, which I never use. Uh, but I might try like a little landscape sketch later on in the live stream uh, with the dark pan pastel, just for fun, just to show you how I would go about using that. And um, yeah, in Texas, it's, it's hot there already. It was hot all week there. And I'm going to do that later on. But first, let's use this. I know people really want to know what I'm using here. Uh, I'm just using a Derwent Drawing Ivory Black 6700 pencil. It acts like a black crayon. And if you cannot find this pencil, because actually they're really, really hard to find, you could replace it with a Sharpie Peel Off China Marker, uh, which is very frustrating to peel that off. But you, you can use this. It gets the same results. So first things first, and this is what I was going over a lot um, this, more, uh, this week with my students, is warm up. Okay, warm up. Um, just do some circles, do some opposite Cs. We did a ton of figure drawing stuff. We did perspective. We did it all this week. So the first thing I want to do is just scribble. Get my hand going, really loosen up. This is something that you should do before every drawing that, that um, you do for the day. Take a couple minutes and do this. Now, just to show you the 
Sharpie marker is the same thing. So look at this. It, it's actually it's a little bit harder, and maybe the pencil has a harder feel, like an H feel to it, because maybe it's just an old pencil, and pencils have the tendency to dry out. I know my environment where I live here in my home is very dry uh, because we keep it very dry. So that I have tons of pencils, and they dry out. This one's a newer pencil. It's just much softer, but you can see. If you you can just buy this anywhere now it's not charcoal it is just um like black crayon they call it a china marker some teachers in the past that i've had at sva uh many many moons ago used to call it a grease pencil because it kind of feels like grease all right with all that said let's get started with our first composition and uh, i might want to zoom out first let me just do a frame yeah i need to zoom out Okay, that's going to be way too small. I want to draw a little bit bigger for you guys here today. I want to draw a little bit with my arm and not with my fingers. So maybe what I'm going to do here is just do a quick um, 16 by 9 frame. M maybe it's not purely 16 by 9, but yeah. So uh, first things first, when, when you're composing, you could compose first in a frame like that or what you can do is you can start to just draw the corner of the frame, maybe the bottom, and uh, it would be nice if I got it in on the screen, Matt. So you can just start with part of the frame and not do the whole frame. And maybe I'll do the next composition like that. But this one, so how can you use a center line to help you compose your uh, landscape drawings or any drawing for that matter. So if we put a simple center line very lightly down the page, uh, I, that I, I'm going to try to make this composition very balanced. I, I don't want this one to be off balance. I, I want this composition to be completely balanced. Let me just tape my pad here so it doesn't move around too much as I am drawing. Good. Okay, so I'm just going to do a simple landscape, nothing crazy. So uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll have my land, and I want to curve it. I don't really want it to be too straight. And maybe I'm going to put my vanishing point from my perspective uh, right here. Okay, I, I don't necessarily want my vanishing point to be in the center. I could do that. And now I'm just going to do an open field. The next one that we're going to do is just going to have some trees in it. Uh, hey, sir, my man, but let's just do an open field with some clouds right now. Okay, so I'm doing a kind of 16 by 9. Uh, get your horizon line in. That's going to be my vanishing point. Maybe I'm going to do some uh, perspective lines very lightly here with a pencil that kind of go with the lay of the land. So I want this composition with the center line to be very formal. Okay, I, I don't want it to be uh, not balanced. So we're going to call this one formal, and we're going to call it balanced. Okay, so I'm going to just be, I, I'm going to make this more of like a, a, a fun fantasy scene. So I'm going to have maybe some like big, huge cloud right in the center of my composition, and it's going to be somewhat balanced. Okay, and maybe I'll have some like little clouds over here that kind of go off again. Doesn't need to be perfect. Maybe there's a, a low tree line over here in my midground. Okay, and I want everything to kind of go to that center. Maybe I have another uh, tree line. So when I was teaching the students this week, we had just like a little time with composition and perspective. And really what I talked about with the students was uh, this is one way to do a thumbnail sketch. Now, uh, a thumbnail sketch, where's my ruler? No ruler here today. Isn't that precious? Okay. No ruler. Okay. I don't know what I did with my ruler, but um, just to kind of give you guys a size relationship thing here, a thumbnail sketch for me is this. Very tiny. So you can trust me, this is about an inch, okay, by an inch and a half. And if I'm going to do this as a thumbnail sketch, I'm just going to kind of do it um, very small uh, like that, and I'm going to just compose it, and it takes me two seconds. Thumbnail sketches are very, very valuable. This is just a bigger version of a thumbnail sketch, so I'm not drawing so tiny for you guys here today. Now, what is something that I talk about over and over again 
uh, that I feel is one of the most important sayings, being an artist. And those sayings are different things should have different values. Okay, so right now I have uh, the ground, I have the sky, I have a cloud, clouds, and I have some trees. And if you just do them with line and you don't use tone, uh, it's just not going to feel that powerful. So maybe what you can do over here where you're scribbling is you can give yourself a key and you're going to say, okay, there's my dark value, there's my middle tone value, and that's going to be my very, very light value. Or the white or the light could be the value of the paper. Okay. Uh, so now what I'm going to make a decision on is... Uh, Let's work from left to right because I don't want to smudge this totally. So I'm going to make a decision. First, I'm going to work with my middle tones. I don't want to um, just dive into it and put my darkest dark in just yet. I want to build up. So number one, I'm adding shape. So different things have different values, and I'm going to do those trees kind of a dark, but not the darkest dark. So I can give myself a key. That's my darkest dark on the paper. So my trees are kind of like a dark halftone. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is say, okay, cool. I like that. Now maybe part of the land. See, I'm holding my pencil a little further back. You can do this if you're heavy handed. I'm going to hold it a little further back. I want my pencil stroke direction to go with the lay of the land to emphasize motion in my landscape. So I'm going with the direction of my perspective lines. So now I'm going to say, just to kind of start off, I'm, I'm also blocking in. I, I don't need to block in the whole piece of paper because I want to save in case I want to have some light things in there. So right now I have my ground is a light middle tone. My trees are kind of a dark middle tone. And what is another thing that you should really try to put in every landscape drawing that you do? A gradation. Okay, so now what I'm going to say to myself is I want a gradation in the sky. So I want there to be a gradation and towards my horizon line, I want it to be a little bit lighter. Okay. So this is very fast, but these are simple things that you can do. I don't want to go too dark with the top of the sky that that's dark enough. And what this gradation will do is it will emphasize the clouds. Okay. And now at my horizon line, I want my horizon line to be light. And I can go on in there. This pencil should erase. And I can destroy the vanishing point just to kind of get full effect because that vanishing point, this is erasing not too badly. Hey, Craig. Craig, I might use the uh, pan pastels that you got me later on. I, I'm, I plan on going like an hour today. Uh, so maybe I'll do a quick like little ske sketch with the pan pastels. Those things are so messy, though when you work at a 45 degree angle. So l let's recap, okay? So number one, uh, you want to, got stuff all over the place here. Oh, the golden ratio. Oh, you want me to get into mathematics here this morning. Okay. Um, so I, I eye the gold, golden ratio. This one has no golden ratio. So l l I'll, I'll explain the golden ratio. Um, so here's my scribble, okay? And uh, long figure eights, opposite C's, all that jazz. Think about your three values. Now, with this particular composition, what I did was I made kind of a 16 by 9 frame. And then the goal of this sketch, and I'll work on it a little bit more, uh, is to use a center line to create a formal composition that is very quiet and very balanced. Okay? That's the goal. Then we just kind of sketched out our horizon line, but we made it curved, and that's our vanishing point, and all of our lines are going to that vanishing point. And then we decided to make the tree line um, our dark, the ground our light middle tone, the sky our light middle tone, and the clouds our light. Now, what is missing? What is the thing that I talk about all the time to all of my students um, is light. So right now, this piece has no light at all. And um, it's fine. You can do a piece without light, but light is everything. So I'm going to say that the light is coming from this way, kind of. Okay. Maybe it's, uh, gosh, maybe it's coming up a little from a little bit higher. And that would maybe be two o'clock in the afternoon on a sunny day. So two o'clock 
I'm going to smudge this now. Two o'clock uh, in the afternoon, maybe this side of the clouds would be a little bit darker than that side. And the bottoms of these clouds would most certainly have a little bit of a shadow. So I don't want to go too dark. That's actually a little too dark for me. Um, but hey, it's never soon enough to screw up, right? So a little bit underneath there. I, I could have been a little bit lighter handed with that. So make the shadow on the left side. Okay, I'm going to kind of kick this out. So light and shade. Now, uh, the light's coming from here. I want there to be, so this is my tree line, and I want there to be a little bit of a cast shadow on the ground. And maybe I could have um, a cast shadow over here, a very soft cast shadow from another set of clouds that is kind of like right above our head. And these trees, maybe they would just have, uh, hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, actually, let me just do one thing, guys. I'm sorry. Good. I need to be able to see what I'm up to here. Um, and I'm almost there. Okay, cool. Uh, so maybe I'm going to go a little bit darker over here with some side planes of trees. And the goal of today's class is not to do a, a realistic piece. This is about doing quick sketches out of your imagination, creating landscape pieces using the center line to help you compose. So maybe now I'm going to do something like that over here. I can do a tree that has like a little bit of a shadow over there. Uh, maybe these trees are in shadow. They uh, get smaller as they go towards the horizon line, bigger as they come closer. So something like that. Now, uh, God, I can clean some areas up, and let's try that. So let's just clean up our horizon line. I am going to go in with the Mono Zero Eraser. So the Mono Zero Eraser. And I'm going to just clean up my horizon line. So this pencil does erase, but i got to be careful because this I'm using newsprint paper, and newsprint paper is throw-out paper. And let me not use my hand. Let me use my brush. Cool. All right. So we have a quick landscape in a grand total. I've been doing a lot of talking. How long have we been filming? So let's say I drew that in like 10 minutes because 10, 12 minutes, and I've been kind of, uh, yeah, uh, talking. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some things here in the foreground. Maybe there's some like weedy things, like little... Um, bushes or something, some kind of foliage that's going to bring us back. Maybe there's like this part of the ground is a little bit darker. Maybe there's some like grass growing here. And I'm just trying to be soft and I'm trying to make things bigger in the foreground. And they're going back to my vanishing point because I'm really trying to use um, perspective in this scene. Maybe some like little texture things and... Uh, I don't want to be too symmetrical with it. That would be fake. Now, yeah. I think I'm going to go darker with the whole ground. I think the ground needs to be darker than the sky, more so than what I have. Yep. And I'm going to not make it so solid. I want it to be um, kind of rough terrain where it's a field slash dirt and... I just want it. See what happens when I go darker with the ground. The scene just becomes so much more um, deeper. Like it has more depth. It, it's not flat. If you, if you draw just with line, uh, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage, in my opinion. And I'll show you right down over here. So let's say I'm going to do this sketch one more time very quickly here. This would be a pure thumbnail. So I do my horizon. I do my tree line, tree line, some lines here for the perspective, vanishing point, cloud. So when you draw just with lines and you're trying to compose a scene, it's just not as powerful as if you would use values and gradations and shape. And this really is how you want to do your landscape sketches. 
not with just line. Now, let's say you're like, no, Matt, you're wrong. I like line, and that's what I'm going to do, and um, I don't care what you, what you say. And that's cool. So we could make a line one work. So what does that entail? That entails line diversity. So you have dark, thick line, middle tone line. I always try to show this digitally, and I can never do it. And light, almost non-existent Shirley Temple line. Who knows what who Shirley Temple is? I just aged myself. When I was a young kid, I used to get Shirley Temples, and I was uh, being pruned to drink Jameson, which I stopped drinking. I like it too much. Um, okay, so dark line. Let's do line. Line. I'm not doing tone. I'm doing line. Line. And darker line in the foreground. So you can middle tone line in the midground. Thicker line in the foreground, texture, and um, I like when I do my thumbnails to use a dark border, just like that. It just makes it so much more powerful. Now, I could do the gradation in the sky with light Shirley Temple line, maybe. So which one is, is more powerful? Now, granted, I'm pressing down really hard over here, right? You guys see that? So doesn't your eye go here? Or does it go here? So the thicker, darker line is always going to, yeah, it's really, <laughs> I have a brand new bottle of Jameson in my home because I've been drinking Jameson for like five years. And I, I just stopped drinking it because I'm just trying to um, manage these headaches that I get every week. And I think the Jameson is just, so what's the word for it? It's, it's an inflammatory. And uh, yeah, so how's about going off topic? How's that? So my dad's drinking it. So when he comes over to sit in the backyard, he pours himself like two inches. <laughs> so he's finishing the bottle really, really quickly. Hi, Eric. Um, Marie Shirley Temple. Yeah. <laughs> the Shirley, my son uh, doesn't get that, but he used to get it going. Um, when we used to go out together before this Corona nightmare. Uh, okay. Margaritas. Wow. Okay. Love it. So now what, what's another thing that we can add to this landscape? Uh, cause I know I just kind of struck a conversation about drinking and different types of drinks. So that's probably going to get out of control. <laughs> okay. So edges and where in this landscape piece, do you want the viewer to look first, second, third? So, over here in the thumbnail that I did, um, I pressed down really hard over here. So you are definitely looking here. So let, let's do that with tone. So I'm going to just do this a little bit harder edged and maybe some stick type things, maybe some tall grass coming into the foreground and texture. Okay. And this is where we're going to look first because it's overlapping things and it's crisper, it's sharper, it's darker. Okay. And um, so now we look here and we can feather into the background. So again, this is really formal. There's no golden section with this one. I'm just trying to put everything balanced from, I just made it a little bit off balance, but I'm trying to balance everything from the left side to the right side of the center line. Now I could balance it by doing something over here. That's kind of too big for my mid ground, so I gotta be careful. And let's finish this one off. I don't need to overwork it. So that's my composition. That is my balanced sketch. On newsprint paper, very formal scene. I could clean up the clouds and uh, I could go darker with the land. Just a little bit. Let's try it. I don't want to screw it up. So this is just a sketch. You just got to know when to leave it alone. Maybe I'll go a little darker with the trees here. Make them more solid. Okay. So that's composition number one. And maybe we can play with the clouds and make them a little bit more poofier. Poofy is a very technical drawing term. If we were to make uh, the sky look 
prettier. It would just have to be about solidity. And let's do some far off in the distant horizontal clouds, which will really make this scene go back into the landscape more. Now, if I try uh, to be more detailed with it on newsprint, I'm going to, I can't really erase on newsprint. Okay. I'm just going to kind of screw everything up. Um, okay. So that's our first composition formal. So now let's do another one and let me see if I can't slide this paper over. Can I just, no, I can't slide that. I did so many drawings this week on newsprint paper and it's crazy. Okay, one second, guys. Let me just get this thing sl slid over. Yeah, you're not going to work with me, are you? We're not going to do that. We are going to take this sheet of paper off, and we're going to use a new sheet of paper. And let's do a composition that is more dynamic. And try not to rip that. And let me, you know, I've been drawing with this pencil all week. And um, I looked at my floor this morning, and it was black from this pencil. And uh, so I used like a cleaner with some paper towels, and the paper towel was black. <laughs> you don't realize how much these pencils get all over your studio. Can I ask something if you were doing... If you were doing this in paint, would you use values, but would you also use high chroma versus low chroma? So yes. So the answer, the, the, the answer to that question, Craig, is yes, I would use values, absolutely. But it's, landscapes are a thousand percent about what is the time of the day. That's number one. The time of the day is going to dictate the color. It's going to dictate the chroma. It's going to dictate the intensity. Is it a cloudy day? Is it a sunny day? Is it um, fall? Is it winter? Is it summer? Uh, those things really determine the colors in a landscape. Um, but the time of the day is, is truly most important. And then we can you know, drill down even more. Is it a sunny day? Is it a cloudy day? Um, there's so many things to think about with landscapes. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do something, and we'll try to use the golden rule thing, even though that's not one of my first things that I think about because me and math, we don't really mix. Okay, now what I was going to, what I was going to supposed to, how's that for the English language? What I was going to supposed to do for you is not do the box first, but we did the box first. Now, I'm going to do something completely different. So what are we talking about here this morning on the live stream? We're talking about center line, okay? And that you could just use this very primitive, simplistic tool for a composition. So our first composition was balanced. Now, this one, I want to make it unbalanced, okay? So I'm going to um, use lots of perspective. So maybe we're going to have this first landmass going like that. Maybe second landmass. Maybe third landmass. Okay, maybe huge cloud. And let's do our, let's say our, just kind of trying to wing this here perspective and how do I want this with cl with trees so I'm gonna just do a bank of trees here so you got to be careful that the land doesn't become too round then it kind of almost reminds me of like a Disney type scene um, but for animation it would be kind of cute so maybe over here we're just gonna have a, a little bit of a bank of trees and this would be our opportunity to put some big shape in Big bank of trees, um, small bank of trees. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of drawing shapes over the hill. And uh, yeah, let's do something like that. So now I'm just going to very simply start to put in my value. So value here, 
lay of the land, lighter value here. I would have liked those trees to be further apart, uh, but it's all good. I'm going to come up bigger. And so there's a theory with landscape painting um, and drawing bigger in the foreground, smaller in the background. Now, golden rule for me, I didn't really pay attention to the golden rule, to tell you the truth. L let me do it for you right here. I, I, I wing the golden rule, okay? So the golden rule is I kind of feel it out, but it's a mathematical equation. So this is the spot that you could put one of your most important elements in the composition. So if, if you're doing a landscape and you're trying to focus in on one tree you put the tree right over here where that golden section is, and there's a mathematical equation that you could use to find it. I'm not that technical. I like to do things a little bit more by feeling when it comes to landscapes. So I could say, all right, cool. Here's my foreground land. It's my big, huge tree right over there on that golden section. And um, I'm gonna tilt this down my next lay of land would be a little bit lighter, and I'm gonna have, sorry, so this is classic thumbnail sketch. I'm gonna do something like that, maybe some, and then a gradation. So this would just be focusing in, Craig, on one thing, one big huge tree, and our golden section, let's kill it, is where I'm putting that black dot. I know I just kind of was a little bit of a bull there. So that's how I would kind of use the golden section. And for me, it's a feeling. Now, I could use it doubly, and so the other golden section would be right about here. So maybe over here, I can have something that you look at that brings us to that tree in the background. Okay, boy, my dog is really snoring. Why does she do this every time I do a live stream? Um, now, with this one, uh, let's go now to the theory of um, things, different things have different values. So I'm going to work from the top, and let, let's do a horizontal stroke. This is going to just be a darker cloud. I love doing dark clouds like that. Okay, and our... Let, let's let's switch it up a little bit. Let, let's have our foreground land not so dark. Maybe something like that. So y these different chunks of land have to have their own value. And use... Can you guys hear the dog snoring? I can't believe I'm asking you this. Can you hear me? Gradation is this. From dark to middle tone to light. That's a gradation. Dark, middle tone to light. Okay, so that's a gradation going across. Okay. Do, do you do most of your landscapes from memory imagination or do you use photo references? Um, so my recommendation for the, a beginner is to look at something. And I, I, I always work from photo reference. Okay, you can't hear the dog snoring. Okay. You can't. I can't hear you over the dog. No. <laughs> you got me there, Alex. Uh, truth seeker, hi. Got it. Thanks. Um, it, you got to put everything. Um, would you approach landscape differently if you had characters? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I would. So the landscape, uh, that's a great question. I don't know if we'll have time to cover that here this morning. Uh, I'm going to kick my dog out of the office. Okay. So if you guys just give me a second, I got to get her out because maybe you can't hear her, but man, it, her snoring's going right through my head. I'll bring Truffs um, to say hello to you guys before I kick her out. It's really rude what I'm doing here, but yeah.
So the quickest way to get white hair all over your body. Hey, Truffs, you want to say, you want to draw a little bit, Truffs? Let's see if she can't draw here. Um, let's see, how are you going to do a gradation? So let's get her paw and let's do it. So let's do a little gradation with Truffles. Yeah, she's drawn. So this is a, a first on YouTube. This is the first uh, dog uh, drawing tutorial <laughs> ever in the world. Okay, Truffs, you're out of here, girl. I'll be right back, guys. All right, sorry about that, but if you guys who've been with me, you know I have three dogs, and um, <laughs> Truffles is, I, she's becoming my favorite. We call her the White Knight, and uh, Chloe is downstairs. She doesn't do steps. She's my other French Bulldog. I, I love her, and um, then we have this other problem child, which I'm not going to talk about on the, on the video here. Um, so where was I? Okay, so talking about people in the landscape. So, yeah, I, I mean, that was my entire, I wish I had the book. I'm going to get one more thing so I can answer this question. One, one more thing. Great question. I think this question was from Eric. No, she's out of my office now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it could be dog drawing tutorials, Marie. That would be very, very funny. So you guys see this book here? Uh, it's a paperback book. So this is the type of stuff that I used to do when I was an illustrator, okay? So you have your, your main character and secondary character, and it was either in an interior space or a landscape. Those were like 90% of the book covers that I painted. So for me... Um, the landscape is 100% uh, about the character. Okay, so character first. Um, then I work my landscape around the character. And there's too many things for me to talk about here in this live stream with this. But when I photograph the boy uh, for the book cover, I need to be highly aware of where my camera is because where my camera is is where my eye level line is. So when I photographed him, I'm going to say that my camera was about at his shoulders, okay? Uh, maybe a little bit lower. I could have cheated a little bit on this one. And here's our horizon line. So whether you're doing a painting like this, this is an oil painting, whether you're doing a painting like this or you're doing a quick sketch like what you're seeing me doing here today, it's the same thing. So this landscape has everything that I'm talking to you about right now. Okay, so different things, different values. The trees are a different value than the sky. The trees are a different value than the ground. See it? What else did we talk about this morning? Uh, center line. So this center line, this is not a balanced composition. It is an unbalanced composition. And what else did we talk about here this morning? Um, gradations. Notice how the ground is a darker green at the bottom, and as we go up to the horizon line, it gradates up to light. And the other thing that we talked about this morning is contrast. So where do you want the viewer to look first? Contrast. So uh, contrast is at these trees, dark trees, light sky. That brings us right down to the boy. Okay, and we look at the boy first, and then his body posture and that arm is pointing towards the secondary character, this boy. So we look here first, here second, here third, uh, the sheep in the background, and then far off in the distance. So there's a lot going on here. And um, that was my old backpack, by the way. I shouldn't have put that in the book cover, but I did. So it's a lot of um, blue-green. I didn't go too crazy with the color on his shirt. It's kind of weird, actually. Uh, red versus green is the color opposite in that scene. And um, you want to see, I, I, you want me to show you a couple of really ugly drawings that I did on the interior? Oh, my God. Can't believe I'm sharing this with you. Here's an ugly one. Okay, so uh, this was before I knew how to draw. I used to do these, like, interior drawings with, like, mechanical pencil. Oh, my God. So these were all about, like, meeting deadlines. Let me just be random here. I'm almost, like, embarrassed to show this. Uh, here's another one. I actually used my father for the, um, the model back over there. And uh, it's just this was just a lot of work with a mechanical pencil. And so this is what I used to do um, for a living before I was a teacher. 
um, just illustrating books all the time, every day. That one's horrendous, my God. Let's see if we can't find a good one. Well, let's put it to bed. Oh, in the classroom. So I call this like meat and potatoes illustration. It pays the bills, okay? But I like that book cover. It's kind of cool. Now, let's get back to this composition. So does that help with placing people? Uh, it's, it's a whole nother thing with, with placing people. Let me get a new pencil. Oops. Okay. Um, the dogs are bad because what the vet said to me is that when you get three dogs, uh, you have a pack. Two dogs is not a pack. Three dogs is a pack. Okay. So back to this uh, composition here. And uh, right now I've done everything in middle tone and it's off balance. And uh, God, so now I, I want to just create uh, a little bit more of a tree line here. So I'm just using a very, this is, remember guys, today is about um, thumbnail sketches, quick drawings, uh, figuring things out, not some deep laborious thing that's going to take five, six, seven hours to draw. So I'm doing a up and down pencil stroke direction. And I'm going to do my detail on the edge of the trees. So I'm being very, very simple. And there's just going to be like, I want these trees to kind of come off of my page because they're going to be the lead in. So our lead in and uh, not quite sure where my light's coming from yet. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if I decided that. So I'm going to do a little circle over here. This is my light. So this is more of a, a low sun. Okay. Um, Luana, thank you. And uh, now low sun here. And uh, can I add, I used to have a gerbil and we gave it away. It was my daughter's. Uh, I think about light source first, Rob, because light source, it helps to tell the story. Uh, and if you are doing something like book covers, storytelling is everything, okay? If you're just a landscape painter, uh, light is just how, how you work, right? It's, it, light is everything. It's time of day. So sun is here, which means now uh, technically this part of this rolling hill is going to get a little bit darker, so I kind of dig that. That's working for me. Uh, this I want softer, but I still want it to be backlit from that sun. And I'm going to do like a little bit of cast shadow there. Okay. And I'm going to just um, put in a little value. Maybe some trees going off there. Trees, tree line. And this little opening back over there. I'm really big fan. I, I, I'm going to use a line just to separate for fun. And now I have this distant land mass here. So what we're doing is completely off balance. And that is just going to be some distant rolling mountain hill thing. Can I ask, uh, but are the flat pencils any good? I think black wing, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've heard, uh, there's a student. Yes, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're good. Uh, there, there's a friend, not a friend, a student, but my students are my friends while they're in my class. And then they kind of divorce me and go on to their second year teachers. Um, there's a student that just loved the black wing pencil and I picked it up and I drew with it and I'm like, whoa, that's pretty magical. Uh, so I think they're, they're pretty good, especially for this. Now, uh, I don't like this because it's too smooth. It's too perfect. So I'm going to go a little darker. Little texture over there. Little higher up. Don't know if I like that, but we're stuck with it now. And maybe not. Let's use the eraser and let's see if we can't make this lower. Sorry, here. Can we erase out? Am I going to mess up the paper? Am I going to rip it on a live stream newsprint paper? This is holding up. Not bad. Let's get the brush. 
Cool. Okay. It's one big hot mess. So now let's just do a little bit more. Let me frame this out. I, I need to bring this one home. And then I want to do a charcoal one for you on white paper. If you just hang with me for a little while. Okay. Sharper pencil. I'm just looking at this thing. What's a, what's a good pencil that doesn't smear? Uh, they all smear, but the one for me that smears the less, least is my Prismacolor Colorase pencil, and that's why I use it. Um, Prismacolor Colorase. Every single video on my YouTube channel, I've used that pencil. So, yeah, that doesn't smudge as much, but quite frankly, all pencils smudge. So I want this to be tall grass. Okay, look at my hand. It's all over my hand, but I really don't care because uh, these are just kind of demo drawings. So tall grass, texture, more texture in the foreground on a landscape. What's the eraser that you just used? It's called the Mono Zero eraser. Mono Zero. Look at it. It's got like newsprint paper on it. That is weird. Um, I got to be careful here with the newsprint because it only takes... Um, oh, I never even knew about the, the word Tombow. I just call it Mono Zero. Tombow. Sounds like... Um, yeah. <laughs> I won't go there with you, Craig. I won't go there on the live stream. Uh, Tombow Zero. Uh, okay, so I'm sure you're laughing right now. So I'm just doing texture in the foreground. And grass doesn't grow perfectly straight up and down. It, the longer grass gets, the more it kind of tips over by its own weight. So you want these strands of grass to kind of tip over a little bit so it's not so, like, manicured. And uh, you want your tall grass to be closer to the bottom of the panel. Uh, because that's where your foreground is. And as this tall grass goes further and further away, you're just going to kind of suggest with like little waves, you can do like little other horizontals. Okay, now we've been neglecting the sky, so let's go back up to the sky, and let's just go a little bit darker here. So this is going to be a little bit more of a stormier day. And overlap is great. So I'm going to come on down with clouds. And I'm coming down now with perspective with my clouds. So you just want to have fun and some horizontals over here. And let's smooth this out. Let me just go with a, I, I, I don't like drawing this way on video because I block the drawing when I do that. But I just got to do that very quickly. And um, gradation. And what else can I do here with this one? Let me just do some details before I get to the charcoal piece. So some trees, branches, trunks. I'm not doing negative space in between the trees, unfortunately. Just for time. I'm just trying to, this is like a really gritty landscape. Let's go darker. Let's add that third value. Let's be like a little bit of a maniac. Really dark over here at the tree line. I can do this stuff all day. This is fun. You're just really dealing with shapes and textures and, and big, massive chunks of land. Let's have uh, this kind of curve around. So this is how I would thumbnail out, okay? You got it. This is how Greetings from S Spain... Uh, you have such a nice voice. Well, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate that. It's the microphone. It's not my voice. Trust me. So, a little bit more shape. How do I add that curvy flow to figure? Okay, I'm going to show you that in a moment here. Let me just kind of finish this off. Curvy flow to the figure. I've been drawing the figure all week. Um, uh, let's just call that one a landscape drawing, okay? I, I could work on it some more, but it's not symmetrical. 
So let's. Get this as a recap. So when you guys are composing your landscape drawings, okay, you want to use this center line as a basis for deciding do you want a formal balanced composition, meaning everything on the left side is equal to everything on the right side. It's balanced, like a symmetrical doorway. Um, like when a doorway to the museum, everything is just so very perfectly symmetrical. And then different things have different values. Think about the time of the day. Where is the light coming from? Um, and think about using gradations. And uh, try not to draw just with line. Try to draw with shapes of value, okay? Uh, really important. And, you know, use a dark, a middle tone, and a light. And even with your line, have a gradation. So this is more of our balanced composition. This is more of our unbalanced. So it's very weighted on heavy on the left side. Okay. And I'm using this kind of thing to lead us. It's not my most favorite composition, but it, I guess it works. Yeah. So off balance, everything on the left side is a little bit heavier. Everything on the right side is a little bit, um, lighter and we're using the tree line perspective curving around to lead us into the background so there's this thing um, about a uh, perspective that um, is being used there as well okay so i'm not going to cover perspective for a bedroom in this one because that would just take me way way too long to explain that but uh, that might be a good idea for next week's live stream, um, how to do an interior scene in perspective. Believe it or not, across the way, I have a drawing that I did yesterday for my animation pre-college class, how to draw interiors. And um, But for this one, I, I'm not going to go there just because I'm in the middle of doing... Uh, the focus of today's class is, is the landscape. And uh, somebody else had asked me, how do I curvy flow to the figure? I'll do that very quickly before we get to the charcoal. Okay. Um, so figure. Curvy flow to the figure. Oh, God. Figure. It's got to start with the torso peanut shape. Everything's curving immediately. It's got to have a line of action okay so that would be the person's legs this would be their head so that's how i do curvy figure okay line of action let me resharpen this i, I don't want to get too off track here i want to keep this about landscapes today but just very quickly here um so opposite c opposite c into the rib cage um navel pelvis hip butt, knee, foot, I'm not even going to outline, opposite C, opposite C, opposite C, into the top of the foot, and um, that's our curvy figure, okay, shoulders, um, arm, arm, so curvy is this, letter C, opposite letter C, letter C, Opposite letter C, letter C, opposite letter C. Letter C, opposite letter C, letter C. Opposite letter C, letter C, opposite letter C. You get my point. Okay, so does that make sense for you guys with the landscape stuff? Yeah. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So this is our unbalanced piece and the other one was our balance. Now, let me take this sheet of paper off of my board and let me do some, like, I, I've used the pan pastels once on a coaching video and it was a nightmare. Um, but let's try it, but in a minimalistic sort of way. Okay, let me just look at these comments. Um, Yep, a lot of great teachers out there. 
Cool. All right. A lot of great teachers on YouTube, no doubt. Now, um, very talented. There's talented people everywhere. It's crazy. If I was a student, I'm a, I'm a life student. I'm always learning new things about everything. But if I was a young student right now, I got to admit, there's a lot of people teaching on YouTube, and I would be confused out of my mind. And so really, uh, you have to just choose a teacher that you connect with, uh, the way they sound, their personality, because most teachers who are really good and teach figure drawing, they're basically teaching the same thing, right? Uh, there's only so many different ways that you can draw the figure. And you have to pick a teacher that you connect with. Uh, and I say this to the students at the School of Visual Arts. Um, yeah, Aries, you can just replay it. Thanks for joining. Um, is Corel Painter, I, I bought Corel Painter many, many years ago, never used it. I'm just a Photoshop guy. I really love Photoshop. I have Procreate on my iPad, but I never use it. I just like to use an indus industry standard software. Adobe is really industry standard and um, it's most used Photoshop. So I draw in Photoshop on the Cintiq. I don't know if it's natural, but I don't have that much uh, experience with uh, Painter. So yeah, uh, just getting back to what I was saying there, you have to pick a teacher that you connect with, okay? Okay, yeah, Proko's a, a great guy. Um, so, you know, you have to, if you like his personality and you like the way he teaches, learn from him. Uh, if you like another teacher on YouTube and you like their personality, learn from them. So getting back to the students at SVA, you know, they ask me, you know, going into thesis year of um, college, fourth year of college, uh, who should I have as my thesis advisor? Who do you think I should pick? And I'm like, pick the person who teaches what you are weakest at, okay? And then also teach, pick the teacher that you like their personality. Because if you're going to be working with them for one year on your thesis film, make sure that you get along with them and make sure that you get along with their personality because some people can really rub you the wrong way. You might like the way that they teach, uh, but they may not have the personality that fits with your personality. Yeah, there is an easy way to find your eye level line, and it's basically you have to figure out where your eyes are. It's where your eyes are, or it's where the camera is, okay? Um, yeah, okay, let me get into this. So pan pastels. I wish I can answer every question in detail, guys. Like, I, I, I feel bad. Uh, you guys are asking me, like, phenomenal questions, and um, I wish I can answer them all. But just to stay with the flow of the class, uh, yeah, maybe hold on until the very end. I might answer that question at the end, where to find the uh, horizon line. It's, it's actually quite simple. So this is what Craig bought me, these pan pastels. I'm only going to use black, and I'm only going to use it in a very, very minimalistic sort of way. And I'm just going to finish off the live stream here this morning. How long are we working here? An hour. Let's say I'm going to work for like 15 more minutes, and then we'll call it a day. Because I know that you guys, you guys have like your Saturdays to enjoy. How can I get this on camera so you can see? I, I guess I'm going to be like one of those artists now that holds the palette. So, Craig, I'm going to be like the painter now on like YouTube who holds my palette. What am I doing with all my sketches? Well, part of my house is sinking into the ground because I you don't really realize how heavy drawing pads are. Oh my God, drawing pads are heavy. And um, yeah, okay, so they're all over the place. I have artwork all over. I don't know what, I, when I die, I, don't, I hope my kids don't, don't burn it all. Use it for like firewood. Yeah, Nancy, that would be a really good question. I think about doing that all the time. And maybe that's a good idea for next week where I just come on here on a live stream and I just draw like I'm sketchbooking and I answer questions and I just randomly draw what the questions are. I think that'd be cool. Okay, so I'm gonna do a short little landscape with the pan pastel. And how can I do this? I'm using a brush. I have charcoal all over the side of my hand, my goodness gracious. And let's just use this, oh, I'm gonna show you a little trick here. This is good. 
I do not want charcoal all over my studio, and this stuff is messy. Blue tape. You got to get the, the original blue tape, and um, it's scotch blue tape. Don't chintz out on this. You got to get the good stuff. So I'm going to take this blue tape, and I'm going to put it right here. I'm taping it to my paper. So all of the charcoal that's going to fall down is going to go there. Okay, now if I want, I can build it up. And I do this with my paintings when I'm using oil and I'm being messy and it's dripping. I put that tape there. See it? It's just blue tape. It's going to catch all of the charcoal because the charcoal is like beyond messy. So let's just take, look at this. I'm going to just draw with this and I'm going to do another a 16 by 9 and maybe we have a big the focus of this landscape is going to be a tree right there let's push this into the paper I'll make it work right now it looks like a disaster but I'll make it work charcoal look at it dropping I'm working at a 45 degree angle so this is kind of like you know those apps that you have on your phone that kind of just stop what you're doing for five minutes and don't think about anything and watch the charcoal fall. So hopefully this will put you like in a little bit of a Zen mode. Okay. So that's enough charcoal. So it's actually too much. Didn't want to do that. Just drawing with this. Our mid-ground, sorry for the noise, our other mid-ground. And I should have had a bigger field. Let's put a bigger field in. Okay, so that's enough of this. I just wanted a different effect here today. So I'm scrubbing this into the paper. I'm going to draw a little bit with my eraser. That tree is a little too round. It's kind of like a... Okay, clouds. Um, so this, everything's going uphill. Clouds. Let's do... Let's not overdo the clouds. I'm just going to have some quiet horizontals. Okay, so now... Let's use, I'm using different stuff for you guys today. I am not using my regular cola race pencil. <gasps> my God, I'm going to use 2B pencil. Okay. Now, yes, Bob Ross. I'll tell you a little story about Bob Ross. So when I was in college, second and third year of college, and I was learning how to paint, my grandparents lived um, with me. My, with my family because they were sick and my family was taking care of them. So I would go up to do my homework up in my room at my parents' house. And, uh, you know, of course, Italian family, you're smelling food at like 11 o'clock in the morning. And I would come down and have lunch. And uh, after lunch from my grandmother, I would watch Bob Ross at like 1230 to 1 o'clock. And like I would go into like a deep trance and want to go to sleep. That was like my second year of college. No, this is not flat. I'm at it working at a 45 degree angle. So now, let's see. I can barely see that. So I just want to. Yeah, that's gross. Now I know why I don't use this. This is gross. I don't like graphite, but I'm going to force it. I'm going to get out of my comfort zone this morning and I'm going to use graphite. And I do not like this. The feeling is very strange. Now, I am not an experimenter. I don't like to experiment with different art supplies because I'm older now and I know what I like and I know what works for me. The only reason why I'm doing this is I'm doing this for you. Just to show you that you can do my techniques with... Let me zoom in. I'm too far away. Uh, let me zoom in. So you can use the way that I draw with any materials really. Cool. Okay, I'm going to make this thing work. It's not going to be this soft, fluffy thing. I'm going to do details. And 
So tall grass, but um, let me just kind of map it out. So that's our foreground. And I have a lot to do with the eraser. This is our distant midground. So this is, um, it's not the golden section thing, but close to it. And now I, I want to show you that I'm going to put some like flowers in this scene. And I want to show you that when you use the flowers, you can use um, perspective. Why do I keep pulling that over? Okay, cool. So let's do our border. To be pencil gross. We talked about how to draw straight lines in class yesterday. How do you draw a straight line? Now on my pad, this is level. On the video camera, it is not level. Okay, so let's give it a bottom. That line's is terrible. And let's give it an edge. I don't want to smudge, don't want to smudge, don't want to smudge. I should have my bridge. Okay, let's experiment with the Craig Tombow Mono Zero. Yeah. Okay, so look at all of the charcoal powder caught on the tape. Yeah, I don't want that all over my studio. I've got thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment, lights, and computers. So now let's, um, I'm, first, I don't have a razor blade. Let me see if I can cut this thing with this knife. One second. Yes. So I just use this like little utility tool and cut the eraser so it makes a nice clean edge. Okay. And let's, let's try to do some perspective. I got to push down the tape. So, so I want a bank. Oh yeah. That erases out pretty good. A bank of flowers bringing us in perspective and the flowers are going to get smaller as we go into the background. So we want a big um, area of these flowers in the foreground coming right off of the page. And then as we go to the midground, they lead us towards the tree. Now I'm going to use this eraser. Let's put a flower over here, just some weedy things. And let's make this ground a little less straight. Maybe some negative space within the tree. So the sky is kind of showing through the tree. Okay, and um, over here. Let's bring that in. Let's bring that in. And so we're just doing a thumbnail sketch. This is just composition. This is nothing more, nothing less. Um, I really don't want to get charcoal on my big brush, but I'm going to do it because I don't want to mix charcoal with my Colorase brush. But I want to take some off. Let's see what this does. No, I'm not going to do that. Don't have enough experience with this, so I'm just going to tread lightly. So now let's go back to this horrendous 2B pencil. And let's add the stems. Let me tape this because it's going to drive me nuts. I'm sure it's driving you nuts. Tape my pad so it doesn't keep going back and forth. Blue tape is my friend, and it's the best invention ever. So in a matter of no time at all, we got an atmospheric landscape. Uh, just uh, no one has ever bought any of my drawings. The only um, work that I've ever sold is um, commercial work, illustrations. So I did illustrations for uh, 18 years. And th those paintings, those, they're not sold. I own them all, but I was paid for those jobs. In terms of fine art, nobody has ever bought a drawing of mine. So, 
Uh, yeah, nobody wants nudes hanging around their house, I guess, uh, at least not here in the United States. And I, I don't ship to Europe because it's just it's not going to be worth my while shipping to Europe like a frame drawer and it's just going to be so expensive. And then there's all these taxes with shipping and all of that. Uh, yeah, so gosh, just go to MatthewRshambo.com and, and you'll see some of my drawings there. But they're, yeah, they don't sell. They don't sell. It is what it is. And um, so let's do some stems. Let's do some tall thingies here. And some tall grass. Let's do some short grass. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay, let's... Um, so this is very fine artish, no doubt. Of course, Bubba is barking. What time am I at? I have been doing this live stream for an hour and 10 minutes. How much longer do you want me to push this? Do you want me to push it more? Do you want me to spend five minutes on it, 10 minutes on it? I think I can push it a little bit more. Let me know. So just some texture on the edges. Really dark over here. So this, I'm gonna say, we talked about light and shade. This is a cloudy day, okay? It feels cloudy. I'm not doing so much light and shade. And I want layers, so let's, go back and I, I kind of don't want to go too crazy with that I want this to be a little bit more triangular yeah no I just uh, I can't use I, I, I just I can't use this uh, for my figure drawings so this is like a um, ice skating like you're walking on ice with a uh, shoes these are my babies here the prismacolor color ace pencils and this is like you're on ice with skates you can control it okay uh, now i kind of like the way that this looks let, let me just be bold let's let's do something bolder here let's do a fence post and overlap the ground i'm probably going to screw it up right now but who cares Fence post, fence post, fence post. Weeds around, tall grass around. I'm just trying to give you guys different ideas for things here. Trying to show you that when you use perspective, you can lead the eye. Let's do some like thin wire. Now I don't want a tangent. I don't want that wire at my horizon line. You don't have to draw the whole wire. You can just suggest it. It is at the horizon line. I do have a tangent. It's all good. I'm going to raise that. Let's go back to the brush. I'm just screwing around. That's a little hard edge. Let's make it lighter. Now, I'm going to bring out another tool just for fun in a moment here. I want to bring out like this, this paintbrush pencil or pen. Uh, yeah, let's try that. So let's see if I can ruin this thing. One second. So this is, we're going all mixed media here today. So let's experiment with this Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen White India Ink waterproof and it's not doing much of anything and it's fun though let's I can simply do this with the eraser but I'm just trying to show you guys some different things here so maybe this I can do the negative space 
in the tree. Okay, and you guys can try this. So I, this didn't take long at all. This was actually kind of fun. So Craig, maybe you um, did something that will get me to use charcoal more, different materials. So your experimentation is starting to wear off on me a little bit. I know, I know. You're smiling in the background there. I don't want to overdo it. You know, sometimes less is best when you're doing this. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. I don't want to overdo it. Uh, now, listen, this thing is crooked on camera, and I, I, that drives me crazy. On camera, it's level. Soft pastels. Oh, God. Um, I don't own soft pastels. Uh, I might have a couple soft pastel pencils, but that to me, soft pastels, gosh, I got to be careful what I say, but soft pastels for me is almost like going to the dentist. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is like, it's so hard to control. And, uh, I got, I, it's so messy. This is so messy. And again, my studio, it's so dusty. I haven't dusted it in a long time, but the amount of charcoal that fell down from this is crazy. Um, I kind of want let, let's use the other mono zero eraser. So I can really be variety, all variety here this morning. So let's use this little eraser. So this is the other Tombow Zero, Mono Zero thing. Then notice the difference between the two. I've cut off the clip because the clip is awful. So when you erase with the clip, it turns. And when it turns with this thing, you don't get it to stay at the um, point of the eraser. So I've cut that clip off. See it? And um, I like it so much better. Let's just have some fun here with this. And um, let's see how this eraser works. It works just fine. This works just as good as that. And I'm starting to screw it up, so we're going to leave it. So this is a cloudy day, guys. I don't like those marks, so we're going to... So how do you know when you're finished with art? How do you know when you're done? How do you know when to stop? Well, I just screwed up, so that means I'm done, okay? Um, yeah, I don't want to do any more. So thank you guys uh, so much for watching this. Yeah, I don't know... I, I think my voice is terrible, but I thank you so much for that uh, incredible uh, compliment. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Okay, I'm just checking out your... Um, so l let's do a quick little recap. But before I do a quick little recap and say goodbye to you guys here today, I'm going to show you this and peel off the tape. Let me use my brush to lift this up. Okay. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Okay, so let me peel off the tape without ripping the paper. So this tape has some charcoal on it and eraser crumbs. Um, if anybody has ideas for live streams, please email me. You can email me, oh God, you guys who are members of my website know my email. Or if you don't want to email me and you have an idea for a live stream that you want me to do, put it in the comments section right below. So look, I'm peeling the tape off. And that's all the charcoal that fell and got trapped. And I'm going to leave it trapped. A uh, couple of things, a couple of requests that I have as before I go. No, I'm not going to spray fix it. That's an extra art material, Craig. Um, <laughs> uh, that's an extra art material. I'd have to go out and buy more art materials if I spray fix it. How to bring a thumbnail like this into color. All right, so I'm, I'm not a, a, a promoter. You guys know what I do. You know my website. If you want to join the website, great. If you don't want to join the website, great. That's fine. Um, Someone who's a coaching student, Scott, he asked me that he requested that my next course on the site be a landscape painting, and that's what I'm going to do. 
Um, maybe that's a great idea for a live stream, how to bring this into color. The color that I use though is oil and, um, maybe I could do, oh God, an oil, quick oil sketch. I, I do a gerbil live stream. Yeah. Dog portrait. No. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, I mean, uh, I request that if you're not subscribed to the channel, this is going to be my big, bad YouTube promotion. It's so highly skilled. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to my channel. And um, if you want to become notified when I do these live streams, just click on the notifications bell. Um, I do these live streams every Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, New York time. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this uh, once college starts again in October. Uh, that's when it started, not September. Because of Corona, I am going to be super, super busy. So I don't know. Um, my website is in the links underneath the video. I don't want to. I I don't want I, I, I to promote it, but it's in the links. Okay. Um, I should promote it, but I don't want to turn these live streams into um, self-promotion. That's not cool. You guys know what I do, and you know how to find me. It's all in the description below. So thank you once again for um, watching this. This was a lot of fun, and the topic of today's class was the center line. And this is uh, you know, our center line on this one. It's not balanced. It's an off-balance composition. And it's just you know, the key takeaway here is to um, use shapes and to think about the lay of the land and to use your center line and, uh, yep. Cool. Thanks guys. Have a great Saturday and I will talk to you soon. Jewel, Luana, Aurora, Nancy, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. More work with charcoal. I can do that. Sandy with an eye. Thank you, Sandy. Jordana, that's uh, my aunt's name is Marie Jordana. Jordana, that's pretty cool. Sabi, thank you. Aurora, Man Manuel, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Just want to make sure that I hit everybody here. Thanks, Marie. Say hello to the cats. That's going to be my sign-in off or cat. Sabi, have a great day. All right. See you guys. Be good.